Today we're talking macro photography and I'm giving you some awesome, easy and creative ideas that you can get going on right away because most of which you already have in your house. Let's get going. So we're talking macro photography today and I'm giving you some awesome creative tips, but first I wanted to discuss what you need to get going in this department. So like anything photography, you can have the best of the best and spend a million bucks, but there's also budget ways to do this as well. You don't need the best gear to enjoy the fun and creativity of macro photography. Let's look at a few things jumping right in that you need and some of them that you don't need. And I'm gonna recommend some relatively cheap tools that you can use to make this a lot easier and get some great results. But first guys, if you haven't seen one of my videos before, my name's Stefan Malik. I do a lot of photography and filmmaking news reviews and tutorials. So if you enjoy this video, if it helps you out, consider hitting that like and subscribe button. Let's jump in and check out the gear. Okay, so here's some macro photography gear that I'd recommend to you. In my opinion, some are necessary and some not so much. Ideally, you wanna have, of course, a camera with a macro lens, but even if you don't have a macro lens, you're still in luck. The first thing you're gonna to wanna to have is a tripod. Whether it's a small one like this or a full-size one, this is gonna let you be stable and really utilize your shutter speed to get the best results possible. I mentioned earlier that you don't have to have a macro lens to take macro pictures. And this is true if you use extension tubes. They're a very inexpensive piece of equipment that lets you distance your lens from the camera sensor, giving you that really close up look. You're gonna lose some functionality of the lens, but it's a very inexpensive way to get introduced to macro. Next, you're gonna need a flash. And a lot of macro photography is gonna need a lot of light, so the best way to control your environment is with a flash. For fine tuning and adjustment, and all around just ease of use, I really recommend you getting a macro rail another potentially inexpensive piece of equipment that I love. And finally, not a complete necessity, but you're gonna need some kind of lighting. In my case, I love this RGB video light, which allows me to get some really creative lighting and just a different perspective when it comes to my macro shots. And I'll show you what I mean in a bit. So there's five relatively inexpensive pieces of equipment that I would recommend to you, and you don't necessarily need them, but they're definitely gonna help. Okay, so let's jump into some projects here. Our first subject is money, one of everybody's favorite subjects. There's lots of cool hidden designs in money, different patterns and words. Check it out. Next, try your luck with rocks and gems. Some of mother nature's most beautiful specimens. And every one of them is unique and amazing. Whether they're natural or even artificial, the cut and shine of these things can look really great in a photo. There's just something about crystals that really captures our hearts and imaginations. Here you can see my portable RGB light at work, giving this rock a look you might not regularly see. Next on the list, we've got something that everybody's got, and when you look really closely, it's fascinating. It's soap. Shake up the bottle to get those bubbles moving, and use colored lights for a different look.
This one's with soap again, but definitely a little bit more time consuming and tedious. It's soap bubbles. The setup's not that fun, but the end result is fantastic. It's almost like looking into space. This one's easy. Throw some oil in some water and light it from below. Up next, we've got one of my favorite subjects, fish. There's just something hypnotic about fish. I love watching them as well as taking photos of them. And you better be patient because they're notoriously difficult. Also keep in mind that if you're using a flash or really bright lights, do not be too intensive and give them breaks so you don't stress them out. Another cool and difficult subject is eyes. Now, whatever your subject, you're gonna need a lot of patience and preferably you don't wanna do it yourself. It's great to have another person or if you're taking the pictures yourself, even better. You can shoot outdoors or with the lighting setup, but the tricky part's gonna be getting out the reflection. But don't worry, with experience, you'll learn how to minimize it and you can always edit it out later in post. Here's an example of a composite that I did using an eye. Can you tell what this is? How about now? That's right. Even food can be amazing when it comes to macro photography. Finally, it never ceases to amaze nature. From the stuff you can find under your couch to inside your garden, I challenge you to go out and find all the little things and critters that mother nature has to offer. Here's a few examples to get your creativity going. So I've loved and I've been fascinated by macro photography since day one. And it's just an awesome way to see things from a different perspective and really get in and see what we can't see regularly. And that just helps you to be creative and think outside the box. 
If you liked this video, if it helped you out, consider hitting that like and subscribe button. Drop your questions and comments down below. If you wanna buy or pick up anything that I've talked about, any of the tools that'll help you to do this easier, well, I'll leave that as an affiliate link in the description for you as well. And like always, make mistakes, be yourself, and get out there and take some more pictures. See you next time.